Are mammograms misdiagnosing benign tumors as cancer? It seems what's been going on is that women over 50 are having this happen more often. Well, as we age, the chances of having a cancer that's malignant go down. So if you find a lump of some kind, it's, it's less likely to be a cancer when you're older. The most aggressive cancers occur in women under the age of 50. Those are the ones that really decimate people. But that's not really a surprise. You know, we, we have that kind of problem uh, as we've learned from autopsies. When you autopsy women that are age 50, about a third of them have cancers. And you're going, what? How can I have a third of them having cancer? Because you're not seeing but a third of them die from cancer. It's not killing them. No. So it means cancers are coming and going. Well, maybe we need to talk more about the definition of cancer because I always thought cancer was malignant and benign meant that it was not malignant. Uh -huh. And if it was malignant, that it could spread to other parts of your body That's right. and keep getting bigger. Right. The term gets confusing and we tend to think in, in just one dimension. And you're right that uh, we shouldn't do that, but we have. And so what we're left with is people calling things like ductal carcinoma in situ, the DCIS, calling that cancer. Why? Because 2% of them will kill you, and the other 98% you'll die with, but not from. Uh, and it's the same thing now with tumors that are invasive, because DCIS tumors are not invasive. But now you're looking at tumors that are isolated tumors. They don't have metastases, okay? That's the caveat here that you have to remember. There are no metastases, and a lot of those tumors are ones that you'll die with and not from. And I suppose if they spread a little bit too much, you could take them out. Surgically well, remove them. It's you. You would like to know in advance which ones are going to be a problem and which ones aren't. And now there is a test that you can do. Oh, and doctor, what's that? Well, it's called a mammal print. Okay, it's but it's not something that's going to be in the mainstream because it's a forty-two hundred dollar test, mm -hmm. and it's not really done in this country yet. You have to go to the Netherlands to get it done. But a study was done between UCSF and San Francisco Medical Center there and people who have the test, and they looked at people who were having not so many mammograms, but looking at their cancers uh, 20 years ago or 30 years ago and comparing them to cancers today. And in women over 50, what they're finding is that there are far more benign cancers today than there were then. Well, and a lot of those news. are being picked up on mammograms and they're being treated because of the fear that comes with it. And that's not good news. No. So we get way over-treated, just like we do well, with prostate people cancer. People get just scared to death, you know? It's like, just get it out of me. I don't want to watch and wait. It makes me too nervous. And well, maybe if they, for some reason, wouldn't be so afraid, then well, they could be more patient. You talk about the big C, what do you think happens? Yeah. People freak out. And that's just the way it is. And yet, if you knew the limitations of the test, the limitations of the surgery, you might decide that it's better to take the risk of having a cancer, maybe 2% of the time is with DCIS or with prostate cancer, than having all these procedures done because they cause lots of problems too. Yeah, well, and, we've talked for a long time about false positives and false negatives. Well, we know now that you have to do about 2,000 mammograms to help one person, and, and you're going to cause those, some cancer too. And then you too. cause it too. So. so it's not like this is a a wonderful test and under the age of 50 I mean we're the only country first of all in the world that recommends them and it's not everybody in this country that's recommending them you're finding the American Cancer Society and the surgeons and the radiologists uh, recommending it because there's and, and big pharma because there's a conflict of interest here there's an awful lot of money that's generated by doing these things but the question is, is are we overdoing them? And, and, I, and I think the answer is clearly yes. Well, I hope that someday soon we'll be talking about the breast thermography that's come out in the news, because we talk about it all the time, and it's all over our site. And You're we right. know that that doesn't cause cancer, and it, and it diagnoses breast cancer in younger women much more accurately than mammograms. Well, and it'll, so it'll put you on the right track uh, when you do a breast uh, thermogram. Because what it's looking is it is it the blood flow that's there, and the tumors that are really aggressive are ones that have a lot of blood vessel tissues in them. Because when that's when there's a lot of that there, the tumor has the nutrients it needs and it has the blood it needs to be able to continue to grow. So those light up because blood is warm, and so it's easy to see. So I think well, you know this test is approved too. I mean the FDA approved it back in 1982, but it fell into disrepute when the technology wasn't that good and we were starting to make over diagnoses and under diagnoses, but now the technology is a lot better.
And mammograms are making over and under diagnoses. Oh, mammograms, Why I think, they very those? simply, should not be used as a screening test. Okay, that's in healthy people. Should not be used as a screening test, certainly for women under the age of 50, unless there's a special reason to, because of, of some kind of finding. And then a lot of women think that the special reason is because it's in their family. But, you know, if they ha if you have the BRCA gene, or that means that you have a tendency to get a bad kind of cancer, and you go and get the mammograms, it can cause it. Oh, it will it will unleash the gene so that it becomes more active. And, here and you your risk for getting cancer careful. goes up. So it's like a treatment to create cancer in this particular setting. So we have a long way to go in, in resolving this in this country because we're more in an economic... Uh, setting and a conflict of interest because of it than are then we are trying to do what's right so we have some thinking to do now this particular approach that was done by the University of California San Francisco people is is useful for us because they did the research that showed that we have more benign tumors than we think a lot of them just disappear over time and we should be less aggressive about what we're doing based on the findings that we have with mammography. But maybe this is another uh, nail in the coffin for mammograms, and it's not just for women under the age of 50. It may be a nail in the coffin for mammograms, period. You know, the British Medical Journal came out with that uh, position a few weeks ago in, you know, December of 2011. I think they recommend them every three years. Well, they're very cautious about recommending them at all because they, and they know there's too much overdiagnosis. So clearly we need a new test. We need to do more research on the new technologies. We need to do more research, research on breast thermography. And if we do that, then we'll know the answer for sure. But as things stand right now, even though this is an FDA-approved test, our radiologists are not even doing the test as another piece of information, which is uh, really pretty disappointing. So we need, to, we need to do something. Breast thermography may be it. Let's do the research and find out.